Hello, everybody. I'm going to start talking to you right now about planning for your research paper and how week number two is going to unfold during summer school. Your first writing assignment was very informal just to explore um, what we call ice breaking. Um, that is writing without worrying about grades. And the whole idea of that first essay was I didn't want you to think about what the teacher was going to say or being correct. I just wanted you to write from the heart and then get engaged in the process of getting feedback from someone you trust and revising, writing a second draft. And that's way more important than getting it right in the first draft. And that's pretty much the objective of that assignment is to explore that process, process of getting feedback and revising. Now we're gonna move on from the informal writer's voice to the more formal scholarly writer's voice. That's really what I need to teach in English 1A for you to succeed in college beyond my course. So it's not a course about trying to please Professor Burko and write what he wants you to write. It's a course that shows you how to write a formal scholarly research paper in any academic major that you might have beyond the English department. So if you study engineering or you study nursing or business, those teachers in those disciplines are gonna want you to write the formal scholarly academic argument research paper style. That's what we're exploring here. Now, to get you to that point, we have taken this uh, objective of writing a six to 10 page research paper and kind of uh, scaled it back to sections of the research paper that we will, we will compose and draft and revise along the way. To get you to that longer paper, we'll be writing it in small chunks that you can later kind of assemble and put together and uh, the first um, thing we need to do is decide on the topic. And since this is summer school, it goes by much quicker than 18 weeks semester where you have maybe two or three weeks to decide on the topic of your research uh, paper. Right now, we have to start deciding in the middle of week two, I actually have a due date for you to propose the topic of your research paper by Wednesday of week two. And then by Friday of week two, I'd like you to propose a term, a concept that you need to define for your research paper topic, because no matter what you're writing about, there are usually some terms that you have to clarify before you get into talking to your reader about whatever it is that you're researching. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you have um, a deep interest in diabetes because somebody in your family came back with a doctor's report saying that you know, your blood test shows that you're pre-diabetic. What does that mean? Okay, so we have to define pre-diabetic. Maybe even part of that is clarifying what is diabetes one, what is diabetes two, what is a uh, blood sugar level, um, what does that mean as far as your diet goes, and you know what can you uh, take out of your diet that will take you away from this condition of pre-diabetes? What does the medical community say about pre-diabetes? Is it really a legitimate um, diagnosis or is it kind of a fancy word that somebody made up to sell you a bunch of pills and frighten you into, um, you know, spending money uh, that the pharmaceutical industry can profit from? So these are all things that we can explore we can debate, we can argue about. A definition is not just looking something up in the dictionary, it's actually arguing a point. And so we make a step towards defending a thesis by this first um, formal scholarly writing that you're gonna do, but it's gonna be connected to your research paper topic. So part of that is, first you have to define the research paper topic. What is it gonna be? We have to decide on that. Sorry, I use the word define because <laughs> the next thing is we have to define terms. Okay, I don't want to uh, confuse you, although that's part of the process, right? Is defining terms is a, a really important step in communicating with people. So here's what I want you to do. None of your proposals are fixed in stone or concrete or whatever metaphor you want to use. You're going to toss out an idea to me. I'm going to kick back my thoughts about that so you can proceed and start working on your research paper. And then you're going to, once you've decided on a research paper topic, a couple of days later, after receiving some of my feedback, you're going to select a term that you want to define 
And then we're going to get into actually writing the definition paper. And that's going to be your first step towards things like finding research, learning how to use MLA style to bring in quotes from your research that you hopefully found in the library um, and set up those quotes with a single phrase that says, hey, a quote is coming and a citation in parentheses afterwards. That's a big part of MLA style. Um, writing a uh, works cited page that goes at the end of your paper, because even a two page definition paper needs a works citing, a works cited page. Um, and all of these things are in practice mode still. None of it's going to affect your grade drastically if you get it wrong the first time. I really like to give you permission to make mistakes, learn from your mistakes, uh, revise based on feedback, and then you know, the final draft will be whatever grade that we determine you get. Um, I'd really like to take the emphasis off of grades. It's really kind of detrimental to learning. Uh, a big part of our school system is punishing people with bad grades for making mistakes. I personally believe it's okay to make mistakes because you will learn from mistakes. If you make a mistake, somebody points out what you're doing wrong and then you correct it, you'll never forget again um, that task that you made the mistake, like maybe you didn't get citations correctly the, the, you know, the first time around, if a teacher points out, oh, you almost got it right, but this is what you need to do to get it completely right, then you'll remember that. And it's okay. It's a natural part of the learning process, giving it a good, honest, sincere try, coming close, uh, refining it, getting feedback, uh, revising, coming up with a second draft. This is all a natural part of the writing process. So this is what we're doing. We started off with an informal writer's voice description, describe a place. You got some feedback, now you can revise that. We're moving now towards the more formal scholarly writing style that you're gonna use beyond the English department. Um, the first step is defining your research paper topic. I use that word defining again, okay? Deciding on your research paper topic and then find a term within your research paper topic that you want to define. Um, and then, I don't know, working on that definition paper. And we'll have a bunch of exercises on how to write a definition paper uh, coming up really soon. Before you do those exercises, we make a decision about what to define. Okay, We're going to do that together. You're going to make a proposal. I'm going to give you feedback on that proposal. We'll refine it a little bit, and then we'll move ahead on paper number two for summer school. I hope that makes sense. Um, between these videos and the written instructions, I'm pretty sure you'll understand where we're going with this, but there's always questions. So among other things, I will have a frequently asked questions section in your uh, instructional module. But don't hesitate to send me an email if you're confused. Uh, things are going by pretty quickly because it's summer school and I'm happy to answer those questions. But I ask you, please, I have a lot of students read the frequently asked questions section first because it's quite possible that your question will be answered and you won't have to wait for me to respond by email, okay? Have fun with it. That's really the most important thing, okay? If you approach it as a chore, uh, as something that you're afraid of, um, if there's anxiety involved, you're not going to learn as much, you're not going to have as much fun. But if you find a research paper topic that you really care about, and you really get involved with this and to the point where you're having fun with it, that you would be doing it, even if you weren't assigned to for a grade in a class, that's the ideal place to be, okay, is to find something that you're really passionate about, passionate about and that you want to to write about, that you want to learn about, that you want to research, that's the sweet spot. Try to find that sweet spot, okay?